Good afternoon. I'd like to call the order of the meeting of the Oklahoma City Metropolitan Area Public Schools Trust for April 6, 2010. First order of business is to approve the minutes of the meeting of March 16th. I would recognize a motion to that effect. So moved. Been moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Uh, next item is a suburban school district application for funding. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We do have a single application for your consideration today. It comes to us from Yukon Public Schools in the amount of $1,371,390.19. This is a, uh, a project that's partially funded by MAPS funds. It's the, the difference is being funded by their bond funds. It's Surrey Hills Elementary School, number of items, cafeteria, classrooms, storm shelter, restrooms, and remodeling the existing facility. This application is also unique, and the district is requesting any interest proceeds that will be posted to their account this month. This could be their final application, utilizing all of their MAPS proceeds um, that were allocated to them as a part of the Suburban District Program. It does meet the requirements of the MOU, and we recommend approval. Are there any questions? Is there a motion for approval? Move approval. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Sorry. Next item is to uh, approve the project requirements for Rogers Middle School Project ES68. Thank you. We do have one project requirement for your consideration today. It is Rogers Middle School. Mike Mize with ADG is here to make that presentation and answer any questions that you might have. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members, Mr. Couch, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Rogers Middle School, um, I believe you have the uh, same information that's up on the screen. Um, the facility was originally designed for, or, or was originally requested to be 600 student capacity. It is now, um, has been reconfigured for a student capacity of 355 students in grades 7 to 8. Um, it is a fairly complete renovation, um, building interiors, exteriors, core classroom improvements, um, and we'll also convert a number of spaces. Classrooms will be converted into OT and PT um, and convert classrooms to, to ESL space, and one classroom will be converted to art space as well. This is the, uh, the building site plan. Uh, first floor concept plan, which modifies some of the existing spaces. Second floor concept plan, which shows some of the additional uh, remodeling and, and reconfigured spaces. Um, project budget, $1,696,333. Um, design is expected to last between April and March of 2000, between April of 2010 and March of 2011. Construction to begin immediately thereafter and end in July of 2012 with a fall occupancy. Um, there were some staff comments and concerns, many of which we've tried to incorporate into the concept plan, but we'll, there will be more opportunity for that um, when an architect uh, has been chosen and, and actually begins work on the project. Are there any questions? I do have a question. Uh, convert classrooms into OT, PT? Occupational therapy, physical therapy. Thank you. And then is there an opportunity if the student capacity increase to convert those spaces back or not? Are they pretty fixed once they're converted? Right now the model as designed is based on 355 students, which is what the district has requested. So uh, there might be some opportunity to do that, but I'm not sure. That, that it could be done without some sort of addition and, and certainly an increase in the budget. Any other questions? Oh, yes, Carl. In the slide where it has community comments, your questions, it says new addition not required for school. Are, are you just saying that that was a question of the community or that um, last? That was a question from the community, Okay. Yes. Other questions? Seeing none, 
I would recognize a motion to approve the project requirements for Rogers Middle School. I move. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're being asked to approve some different reports. Uh, first is to approve the schematic design report for the Monroe Elementary School Project ES-58. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is the first of several additional presentations you're going to receive today. One of the items that I want to bring to your attention is in the memorandum that's included in your packet. This project is, is the one that is over the, or is over the estimated budget due to an oversight um, in not including the computer lab as a part of the original program. And so you will find that this project is currently estimated at about 196000 over that budget, but we're going to continue to work with the architect in upcoming design phases to see if we can mitigate some of that cost. I bring that to your attention as we go through the presentation. Omar Corey is here for Moda Architecture and can answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Eric. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here with you today to present the schematic report for James Monroe Elementary. Starting off the scope, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the scope is to convert the existing uh, building into a 437 student uh, pre-K through sixth grade elementary school. Currently, it only goes up to the fifth grade. Uh, as part of the scope also is to renovate the existing building, repair and modernize the existing spaces, um, and enhance the learning environment of the building. Uh, some of the items that we're including in this addition and renovations are new classrooms, uh, approximately 7,000 square feet of classrooms, special needs spaces, administrative areas, as well as common learning spaces. As with any project uh, that we, we uh, work on, there are some key design factors that are involved. Uh, for this particular one, uh, what we're trying to do is enhance the existing architecture of the building so the new addition does not uh, it's not overbear the existing building. Uh, group the classrooms within their respective grade categories, uh, and we'll see that later on in the floor plans. And, and make the structure in the building itself more efficient in terms of circulation and the distances between the learning spaces and some of the communal spaces. And last but not least, to limit the construction disruptions during the school year while, while the kids are attending. And for the next couple of uh, presentations, we'll have uh, a plan that will entail what we're going to do in each phase. <clears throat> there were 32 items in the site and facility assessment report, um, as, as well as other items that as the uh, design team went, went out and surveyed the building, uh, came across. Um, in terms of the overall building, uh, the, the major impact is the, uh, the building envelope. So the existing windows gets replaced, the existing roof gets redone. Uh, taken out, taken out, and new a new roof system put on. Uh, in terms of site issues, there are some drainage issues in the playgrounds that are getting some water into the building. We're going to take care of that as well. Uh, in terms of the interior of the building, uh, new paint, new floors, um, some new furniture, some new sinks, new ceilings, uh, as well as all the ADA improvements and uh, to make the building fully accessible. What I'm going to show you today is three site plans and one floor plan. This site plan itself is the recommended option. Um, we basically have the existing building uh, that is facing north is up on the sheet on the screen in front of you. Um, the recommended option basically takes the existing wing that's on the south side of the building and converts it from a single loaded corridor uh, classroom uh, building to a double loaded corridor classroom building. Uh, similar to the one that's on the north side that's existing. And we'll get into that a little bit on the floor plan as well. Future, future additions to the classrooms uh, would be in the new wing. Uh, and then the, uh, in the future, if there is a future gymnasium, it'll be on the south side of that area that would overlook the athletic fields. New parking, um, we're re renovating the existing parking lots, but we're adding more parking to accommodate for the new addition as well. In terms of the floor plan, like I said before, we're trying to group the, the various grades together. So second through sixth occupy the existing uh, north wing of the building. The center wing is basically more communal spaces where we have the media center, <clears throat> the cafeteria and the stage area, some special needs rooms, and the arts and uh, music. Uh, the new addition um, 
It takes place on the south side of that uh, existing wing where we add uh, first grade and uh, K and pre-K uh, classrooms as well as expand the existing uh, admin. The existing admin moves from where the computer lab is now to that area in brown. We create a, a basically an administration function that has uh, uh, oversight to the, to the entry. Uh, so the entry is a secured entry vestibule uh, where people walk in, would have to walk into the administration wing before they get into the existing building. This is option B. Um, this is one of the options that we came up with before we came up with option A, but option A is always the one that we we're going to go with. Um, the new addition for this one uh, expands the existing south wing further south, and the reason we uh, did not particularly like this, this particular plan was that uh, it, it doesn't function as well as the other one uh, in terms of uh, uh, the circulation paths and how far it is from the gymnasium or the new addition to the other communal spaces of the building. So it's, it's, it's less of a, uh, it's actually more of a travel distance between the classrooms and the various functions of the school. This next plan is, is probably the, the most, the costlier of the two, or the three that we showed you. In this one, we, we basically add a new addition. We convert the existing middle wing, uh, I'm sorry, the existing south wing to a, a double loaded corridor configuration just like the existing north. Uh, once we build this existing or build out on this new wing, we demo the existing middle wing. And that, that, what that would create is a bigger courtyard in the middle of the, of the site. And then uh, obviously the new additions would happen on either side of uh, where it is. But this, this entails us actually uh, building more square footage to accommodate for the wing that we're demoing. And that's why this scheme did not, uh, did not fit within the budget. I mentioned before uh, we're trying to make uh, this whole building more, a uh, uh, little bit more, uh, for it to function a little bit better than, than what it is now. And for the two numbers that, that we're looking at, we're looking at the 437 uh, student capacity model at 34,000 square feet with circulation mechanicals and restrooms being at 13,000. Um, for what, we are, what we've come up with, it's actually a smaller footprint of the building with a smaller footprint for the circulation, so it's a little bit more efficient than uh, what you normally uh, are used to. Schedule-wise, we're still uh, in schematic. We're trying to get this building out uh, by the end of this year and construction to start in early 2000, or late 2010, early 2012 with uh, finish approximately the end of the summer of 2012. Cost, like Eric said, uh, we're a little over, uh, but that doesn't excuse us from not uh, continuing to try to get that number back down to where it's supposed to be, and we'll continue to do that in the next couple of phases as well. That's the end of it. Any questions? Any questions? Yes, Carl? Can you tell me on the special needs classrooms, that's quite a dramatic difference between what they have currently and what they um, are going to have? Are there going to be regular classrooms with some modifications, or are they each going to be modified differently? Uh, you know, this point? particular uh, school is the, uh, is the main school for the hearing impaired of the okay. district. Um, the classrooms, the special need classrooms that are uh, in the program are similar to all the rest of the middle or the elementary schools. We have one special needs that's self-contained and two other ones that are non. And we've maintained that. We've already told the staff uh, that that's, that's kind of how it's set up. Uh, but if their needs change and if they need to update some of the classrooms that they have or change the, the curriculum for that particular classroom, mm -hmm. th that would be up to them. Okay. And do you have, are the fire alarms visual in addition to being yes, traditional? Everything in this building would be up to code. Okay. Any other questions? I'd recognize a motion to approve this report. I move to approve the report. It's been moved, Second. seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Thank you. Next, next item is to approve the schematic design report for Oak Ridge Elementary School Project ES53. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We do have Dan Skaggs with us today from HSC Architects to make the presentation and answer your questions. Good afternoon. I'm happy to be here uh, to present Oak Ridge uh, to you, our schematic design 
uh, for the renovation and addition project at Oak Ridge Elementary. Uh, the student capacity for this school is 248 students currently, and that is our design capacity as well. Uh, the existing facility is about 16,000 square feet, and we'll be adding uh, an additional approximately 16,000 square feet uh, in this project, um, including media center administration uh, and classroom additions. The classroom additions really replace the temporary classrooms that exist on site currently. I uh, just might spend a moment on a special design consideration uh, that is key to this project. And that is on the site, there is a floodplain that really runs right through the middle of the, of the existing school. I want to reassure you that there's no, um, there's no issue with that per se. There's not a problem that we've been made aware of, and it's grandfathered in, so there's not a code issue. However, we're not allowed to build the addition into that floodplain without uh, compensating for that, and that entails uh, a lot of work. So uh, needless to say, it's advantageous to build the addition outside that floodplain. So the letters on the screen currently um, kind of show the the various options that we presented to you in the report. Uh, option A was kind of the conceptual plan on the program that's ruled out by the floodplain itself. <clears throat> option C was one that we looked at uh, trying to get kind of the best of both worlds, get good proximity to the existing building, yet get most of the addition out of the floodplain. Uh, and option B is trying to get most of the addition out of the floodplain and some kind of connector uh, whether it's indoor, outdoor, connector to the existing building. Um, and option B is the one that, I mean, option C is the one that we're recommending. We visited with Dell City um, throughout all this process. They are the ones that adopted the FEMA floodplain overlay map. Uh, so we wanted to make sure whatever we do uh, is okay with them. And they have uh, given us schematic approval on this idea of getting the majority of the addition out. They, did, they requested that no classrooms be in the floodplain. And also I might add that the addition, because of its proximity to the floodplain, um, we have certain requirements for finished floor elevation that we'll adhere to uh, and other uh, civil engineering requirements that we'll adhere to as well. So I'm just trying to put you at ease and of course at the end I'll answer any questions further on that that you may have. <clears throat> but just to spend a little bit more time on the plan, uh, the uh, lower half of the plan is the existing building. Uh, we'll be renovating that as part of this project and adding almost an equal footprint uh, at the upper part of this plan as the addition. Uh, schedule, uh, just because of Complications with our harsh winter and winter break. Uh, it's kind of prolonged our approval process, but we've been proceeding in anticipation of approval on our schematic design. We've been proceeding with preliminary design to try to keep on schedule to be able to present to the school and the community uh, before the summer. Uh, so we're proceeding with that to try to remain on the schedule that's on the screen currently, even though we're now, um, you know, in the first part of April differs a little bit from the schedule that's on the screen. Uh, Budget-wise, we're right there with nothing to spare, so we'll keep a sharp eye on that. And again, my main concern is going to be civil engineering costs uh, related to that floodplain. So we'll try to keep, net, keep tabs on that and, and uh, adjust the budget accordingly or adjust the way we spend uh, monies accordingly to keep within budget as much as possible. Uh, any questions? Uh, you said that there are going to be classroom additions, is that correct? But they can't be located within that floodplain? How That's, many classrooms are we talking? Uh, we end up with a total of the, the same amount of classrooms they have now, but currently half their classrooms are temporary classrooms. Um, total, I, I can't remember, we have 12, 12 uh, standard classrooms and then we have the special needs classrooms as well. 
but that includes the existing facility. So I think we're adding seven. Um, but the request from Dell City was just don't put a classroom in that floodplain. They're okay with offices and like the OTPT could be in there. They just didn't want the big, the big rooms with uh, more people in them in that floodplain. So. Um, yes. yes. In, in the instance where I'm assuming this is designed for like a hundred year flood. Yeah. I'm asking. Mm -hmm. um, in the event that that happened. Um, in your design, first, what would happen to the original building and what would happen to the addition? Um, and actually, there, one of those lines was a 500-year floodplain even. So we're trying to get the addition outside the 500-year or the majority of it. Um, but as to what would happen, um, I suppose it's conceivable that it, that existing building could get water in it based on the elevation and if the water rose to that level. Um, however, we are not raising that building or trying to uh, fix drains or anything. Or? Uh, we could try that, but I mean, if you have a 500-year flood event, for instance, the point is the water level is coming up faster than you can drain it away. So I'm not sure that that's going. I'm not sure that French drains really going to do anything, but maybe make you feel better about it. I'm not sure it's going to accomplish anything. However, that school has been there since I think it was built in 60. I can't remember exactly, but then the 60s. And to date, they haven't had. I asked the, the uh, teacher and the maintenance uh, man that had been at that school for quite a while, and he hasn't uh, ever experienced water in the building because of that. It's always been a roof leak or something you know, typical. So they really haven't experienced that type problem. And I might say that the, uh, the immediate surrounding terrain seems to slope away from the building properly. There are good overhangs. Um, but again, a 500-year floodplain, the water level is rising over the whole site. So, I guess the short answer is we could we could have water in that building as it exists now. The addition would be safe. Thank you. Uh, but we're not making that addition worse than it is now. So, any other questions? <clears throat> Seeing none, I'd recognize a motion to approve the schematic design report for Oak Ridge Elementary School. I approve. There's, been, move. there's a move, a motion. To, is there a second? Second. Mo move and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is to approve the preliminary report for Dunbar Elementary School Project ES45. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we do have Sean Willis here um, from Stacy Group that's going to make this presentation. I'm going to call a special item to your attention that's also included in the memo. In your packet, we have received direction from the school district that following approval of this preliminary report that they're asking that this project be placed on hold. There are some studies um, that are underway in, in this area. Um, I believe they're looking at some, some student options, potential for, uh, for school, um, opportunities for changing of boundaries and some things like that, maybe some potential school consolidations. But until they finish that, they have asked that we, we stop after approval um, until further notice. But with that said, we do have Sean Willis here to make the presentation and answer any questions you might have. Good afternoon. Uh, Dunbar Elementary School is an interior remodel project uh, for the most part with um, just a small elevator addition. The program is for uh, to upgrade the school to a 240 student capacity uh, pre-K through sixth grade. Um, with the school being an interior remodeled, very little site work um, is to be shown here, but we are showing the removable, uh, the, the portable classroom is being removed. This school at one time had a wading pool and a pool house that would be removed, um, improving the landscaping and sidewalks and the entry to the building um, and adding better access to uh, the kitchen for deliveries. The site facilities assessment includes all of the um, modernization items for classrooms, paint, lights, ceilings, um, IT to bring it up to a, a, a code and a modern school. The first floor plan shows the lower uh, grade levels on the first, uh, first floor with the administration expanded in the front. We are actually moving the entrance um, a little bit to the east or to the west here. North is actually down um, and creating a secure vestibule. So. Uh, there is more protections for the students, for uh, visitors into the school. 
The second floor has grades three through six with the media center and computer lab on that floor. We are converting uh, two classrooms into a mini kind of special needs suite. Um, and we have met with a special needs director to get all of these areas worked out. Uh, this is just a, a blow up of the admin area. We are showing the elevator adjacent to the entry for easy access for uh, visitors and, and students uh, with mobility um, problems. Um, wouldn't have to traverse through the school. We are, again, including the secure vestibule uh, at the entry. This is just a, the front um, elevation showing the kind of the new landscaping flagpole um, cleaning up of the, of the front brick and glazing. The floor pattern plan, we met with the principal and her staff, discussed color schemes. This is the plan that she has chosen. Um, it's kind of hard to see on the screen. The colors, they're sort of uh, natural, kind of greens and browns. Uh, they do like the, the lines around the corridor of the, to keep the kids in a row. And the next two slides are the finished materials again, kind of the browns and greens uh, that they preferred out of the choices. Again, restroom tile, floor tile. The uh, current estimate, we are at 200000 under budget um, at this time. Um, with the project being put on hold, we would have to obviously look at that again uh, if the project were to proceed. And again, the, the schedule will uh, be pending on, on further approval. Uh, this would be the completion of the preliminary design. Without any questions. Questions? Seeing none, I would uh, recognize a motion to approve this report. So moved. Been moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Next item is to approve the preliminary report for Hawthorne Elementary School Project ES-52. Thank you. We're pleased to have Brian Guz here from Mass Architects to make this presentation for you today. Thank you, Eric, and good afternoon. Always excited to, to share with you what we've got going on at some of the district schools. We'll look quickly at the project scope. We'll create an uh, environment for 520 students by renovating the entire existing building and providing an addition for administrative services, new classrooms, a media center, and support spaces. The site and facilities assessment identified a number of uh, primarily maintenance items we'll be addressing in the existing building. In retrospect, a lot of the, the preliminary design here was driven by really trying to make a, a safer site for, for kids to be on. Um, this area over to the right where we're showing is a, is a new parking lot. Currently, it is used as the school's playground. The existing parking lot is located approximately in that reddish area uh, labeled addition. It created a lot, of, uh, a lot of conflicts between kids moving safely about the site. There's so many problems with dropping off and picking up children in these dense neighborhoods. So we really wanted to try to address those issues head on and really improve on parents' ability to, to drop off their kids, not have the kids have to run across a parking lot to get into the school building. Additional, an, a digit, additional feature that, uh, an additional security feature is the school really didn't have a, an identifiable main entrance. And there's a beautiful entrance located just off that circular drop off area that currently is since the front only serves as a playground, is only seen by the kids. We get to kind of reintroduce the public to this great old historic facade. Looking at the floor plan, as, as shown in the site plan before, since we're getting that parking lot away from the back of the building, that allows us to do a one-story addition across the, the back of the entire building. Kind of mimics the same symmetry as the front of the building, the kind of dominant central axis and the two flanking axes really not a lot of addition or no addition work with the exception of an elevator to the second floor. As I had mentioned before, it, it, one of the things that we're most excited about this project is getting to reintroduce the public to a, a great old building that served the district. When we're complete with, with the renovation project, the building will be entering its second century as an educational facility here in the district. Our addition, we like to make it look like it's always been there. Sometimes we say that if 
you can't tell we were there, we've done our job the best. We've relocated the media center down here. This would be the view from the main entrance uh, just when you walk through the door. The administrative office immediately to the left, the media center directly in front of you, and the parent resource room over on the right. A view of the what will be the new main media center. A significant cafeteria expansion is also included in the project. Uh, the, the existing one is, is way undersized, and they have to have too many lunch periods um, throughout the day. It ends up taking several hours to feed the kids, essentially tripling the size of the cafeteria in order to have less seatings. One of the new a view of one of the new classrooms. Our current total cost estimate is $4,330,124. Our budget was $4,343,050, so we're about $13,000 under budget at this point. The project schedule, we are here presenting the preliminary report to you today. With your approval, we'll proceed with construction documents and complete those late this summer and release the project to bid, which would permit the beginning of construction almost concurrent with the start of the next school year. Construction would continue all the way through 2011 and complete basically January 1st of 2012, just in time for Hawthorne to celebrate its centennial. As far as the execution of the project, I had mentioned the, the first aspect of it is to replace that parking lot. So down in the yellow area in the lower part of the screen, the project would initiate with the construction of the new parking lot. Once the parking lot is complete, that frees up the, the existing parking lot for us to begin the, the addition on the back side of the building. Over the summer, next June, July, and August, we'd come in and renovate the entire first floor. So at the start of school, the entire ground floor would be ready to be occupied by the kids. At that time, we'll have excess classroom capacity and be able to basically wall off the second floor and complete the renovations of the second floor from September to December of 2011. Finally, we'll remove the temporary classrooms and re restore the, the playground area there to the back of the building. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. We have our, our finishes over here on the side, and I'd be happy to entertain any questions you might have. Questions? Seeing none. I would recognize a motion to approve this report. Move approval. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Next item is to approve the preliminary report for Prairie Queen Elementary School, Project ES-54. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We do have Bob Howard here to make that presentation. I'm from Howard and Associates. You can also answer your question. Thank you. Uh, uh, Chairman Edwards, uh, trust members, uh, Mr. Couch, and I'd like to say hello to Mr. Francisco, who I met a couple of weeks ago. It's always a pleasure to be here and present a, a skill project. We appreciate being here. Uh, today we're asking for the approval for Prairie Queen Elementary. Uh, this is the uh, preliminary stage, and at this point, everything that I'll be showing you is uh, the floor plan, the site plan, the assessment items will be what you've seen in the schematic design phase. I'll concentrate on the uh, appearance and the color board today. The, um, the items that we um, are doing, just to recap for some of those that were not here in the previous discussion, we will be going over, we will have two additions, one on the north, one on the south. Uh, basically, uh, we'll show you the floor renderings and the, uh, we'll show you an updated schedule, updated cost schedule. The uh, South Admin basically is just an admin and a media center. On the north side, we're adding the uh, classroom addition. Again, this is pre-K through six. Uh, we do have the grades allocated to uh, specific locations where they are separated and we have good flow through the building. The uh, site and facilities assessment uh, has not changed much. The only thing I might point out is we're spending a little more money for uh, storm detention and some uh, storm outlets. 
Uh, this is the site plan. Again, you see the north addition there on what would be north up sheet, uh, northwest corner of the site. On the south side is the new addition, the admin, and the library. The curved area that you see in this is a uh, modification and integrating an existing plaza that the Prairie Queen Neighborhood Association is very proud of. So we're using that also in our scheme. We're adding a new parking lot. There you can see to the east. We're also, if you look to the northeast, adding a, uh, an extended drop-off area on that location. Uh, this is a blow-up of the plan. The uh, functions, we do have MH classrooms, uh, special needs, and those are accessed from the west side of the building, uh, as you can see. Uh, what we're trying to do, and our goal at Prairie Queen, is right now when you come to the building, it's a U-shaped building. It has a large courtyard, and you really don't know where the entry is. Uh, we're spending $5.7 million. We feel it's important that we do something out front in the courtyard, and by doing so, we're going to take a 60s building and bring it into kind of today's era. Uh, when we do that, we don't have to do a lot to the existing to uh, make it feel good. As you can see, the south addition will really enhance the front, be welcoming, and we want, map, and we want the community not, to know that the uh, dollars are being well spent. On the uh, far back northwest corner, you do see the uh, classroom addition. Uh, these are just blow-ups of what's going on, uh, the front entry. Uh, the bottom left uh, media center courtyard you're seeing they would like to have an outdoor courtyard for teaching. Uh, we've incorporated not only there, but throughout the building, what is called a uh, wagon wheel. Uh, their logo is a prairie schooner. We've taken the wheel off the schooner, and we're trying to reflect that in floor patterns, wall design, and also out in the uh, courtyard. Uh, this, this also shows you the upper right photo shows you what we would do, the wagon wheel, Go ahead and reflect that in the ceiling. Uh, it's, it's no different than a paw print for a roof or something like that. So we, we just want to give a little identity uh, to the children that is special to them. Uh, this is the color board, as you can see here. Uh, we're using warm colors, uh, a lot of tans, browns, golds. And then the other thing that we'd like to do is we'd like to, in that we're replacing all the windows on the exterior, right now they're painted white, we'd like to energize the building, and we'd like to change those to a uh, rust colored, uh, reddish rust color, just to energize kind of what's happening on the outside. The other ingredient we're doing is painting the existing fascia a white color, and then we've incorporated that into our new design to try to uh, make a cohesive feeling between the existing and the new building. The uh, project schedule, as you know, we move these projects very quickly. Uh, we anticipate uh, the preliminary report being turned in uh, sometime in May. Construction documents will probably be ready in June. The bidding process will take place June through August. Construction is anticipated to start in August. Right now, it is showing about a year's time. Uh, two ingredients that we still will be addressing between now and, and the uh, construction drawings will be the uh, storm detention and a little bit of the drop-off on the northeast and also phasing. The school is filled, and so we, need, we may have to allocate some additional dollars for that. Uh, we show an ad alternate. We're considering bringing back that uh, drop off on the northeast to the base bid once we know better on where we stand on those dollars. Uh, the total cost right now we're showing we're 290000 under budget. Again, we have the items I've mentioned that we need to investigate further, but we feel that we're going to be very close to budget, uh, being under budget at the end of the project. Any questions? Questions? Seeing none, I'd recognize a motion uh, to approve this report. So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Thank, Thank you. you.
Next item of business is to recommend to the Board of Education of Independent School District Number 89 to receive the Consultant Review Committee report and authorize negotiation of architectural services contract with the small group for Emerson Alternative School. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is the final um, project that's currently a bond project that uh, we have finished up the interviews. The small group is being recommended. They are a repeat architect for the Maps for Kids project, They're currently on the Putnam Heights Elementary School that's in construction. We're recommending approval. Questions? Um, just, uh, if you would, speak to how this design work would fit into the alternative for, for the Emerson site. I, I'd be happy to. We actually have not yet approved the project requirements for Emerson. And we've spent a little extra time on this project because of the specialty of that school. For many that I think you already know, um, it is a school that uh, is just north of downtown, and it does um, uh, it does hold two different programs. They've got a they've got an alternative school, a traditional alternative school, but then they also house um, pregnant teens and also their their children. Um, they have a full time daycare that is there. They have specialty classes that are that are more for parenting and, and that sort of a program. Those weren't originally conceived as a part of the Emerson project. We're going to be recommending a project requirement to you that has an option two for your consideration. It incorporates those special needs of that school into the actual original historic building by a new addition to replace all the exterior buildings that are found and littered around that site. It has three or four metal buildings that uh, are not cohesive with the design. They are separate structures. And so we'll be bringing that back to you for your consideration along with an increased budget. Um, the budget that you're seeing today is just for the renovation only at 1.5 million. The new budget is just under three million dollars, um, but yet that will be something that we'll present separately and bring for your information. That'll be done also before we proceed with the formal negotiations with the architect so that we're clear on the scope of work required for the project. Any other questions? So just to clarify and be really clear, the we haven't even begun the process of determining what their needs are. So for instance, for the, for the school that accommodates um, people who are pregnant and may need some child care issues, we will be going through that process after this. We actually have completed the community meeting process and we have the document in its final draft form, the project requirements themselves. I would anticipate that we could have that as early as your next meeting for presentation. So we actually have started and nearly completed okay. that process. Okay. Any other questions? I'd recognize a motion that we recommend that the report be received and the contract negotiation be authorized. Move approval. And moves is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Thank you. We are now being asked in, under final plans and specifications to approve specifications for, Del for Davis Elementary Asbestos Abatement and Demolition and authorize the Secretary to advertise for bids to be received May 4, 2010, Project ES-76. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This was a project that was added in our, in our latest PIP amendment. Um, there is a vacant building the district has requested some assistance in demolishing. It does meet the requirements of the sales tax. So we have incorporated this. The plans and the specs are complete. It is a joint asbestos abatement and demolition project. We're ready to go out for bids. Estimated cost is $200,000. We recommend authorization to proceed. Is there any questions? I recognize a motion to authorize to advertise for bids. So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Next, we are being asked to approve the final plan and specifications for Thelma R. Parks Elementary School and authorize the Secretary to advertise for bids to be received May 4, 2010, Project ES-47. Thank you. This is our final presentation this afternoon. It is the final plans for Thelma R. Parks Elementary. We do have Steve Chester and Tom Ratnasson here from Boynton Williams and Associates to make that presentation and answer any questions you may have. Thank you for your time. I'd like to present the final plans presentation for Thelma Parks Elementary. The uh, project scope of this, we're bringing this school up to 539 students, and this is a list of things that we're going to be doing, adding classroom special needs. And the, uh, this is the side plan. If you look over in the left-hand side there, the grade-in area, that's the new addition. That we that we've shown. We'll be doing some minor remodeling of the existing building. The uh, 
all the parking is adequate for drop off and the students that we'll be adding. The uh, gray area there on the left is the uh, additional classrooms. You'll see an English second la language class there, special needs. And then the green area, just to the left of the main entrance there, is where we're remodeling the adding to the administrative area. Because when we go to that many students, we have to add a PTA, assistant principal, and those types of things. And then we'll be doing a little bit of remodel in the arts area there to, to uh, put a hood and enclose the kiln there. This is the, uh, the color board showing different materials that we'll be using in the new addition. We're going with more of a blue scheme there, which is the school colors. That shows the, the new restroom, the elevations of the restrooms, the different tiles that we'll be having for the walls for the girls and the boys, and then the floor pattern there on the lower right. And then we're showing a typical uh, classroom addition there and the corridor addition we're, excuse me, matching the existing that's there. This is the exterior addition of the, the way the new will be added on there. The area that has no color is the existing, and, and you can see the brick and EFAS work that we're doing to match the existing on the new. That's a perspective rendering of the north, looking from the northwest at the new addition. The uh, new addition we're estimating is going to cost us one million four hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars. The renovation is two hundred seventy-four thousand. Total cost cost estimate is. One million seven hundred and seventy-four thousand. The budget was one million eight hundred and twelve. That gives us thirty-eight thousand one hundred and eighty-five. And we do have a uh, an alternate that we're hoping to get. Out. That's why we're hoping it'll come in under like that. We're hoping to get this done and be able to go ahead and start bidding this month, and then be able to start construction in July. Is there any questions? Were there any particular comments from the community or the staff as it relates to this particular school? Uh, earlier we did have, from the staff, we had some concerns about some flooding in the, in the front. We've, we've, we've incorporated that. We've, we've put some area drains in, and uh, those kind of concerns have been addressed. Carla? Are there any, were there any concerns that you weren't able to address? No. Any other questions? Seeing none, I'd recognize a motion for approval. Move approval. It's been moved or second. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. Opposed by like sign. Thank you. We now have some change orders. First, it would be approved change order number one for Britton Elementary School, an increase of $22,133. Project ES21. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Britton project is well under construction. It's about 25% complete. There are three items on this change order, and there's also 18 extra days being added as well. The days um, relate primarily to the first item that you'll see, plumbing repairs, about $19,000 for the work. During construction, it was identified that under the kitchen area, there were several leaks in a lot of the drain piping that had created a significant void under the existing slab. Mm -hmm. So the work was required to remove that slab, fix those drain lines, and make a massive repair as a part of this change order. The remaining days on the 18 is due to inclement weather that we've seen this past December, and I would expect that we're going to see that on many of our projects that were in the exterior or site, you know, site portions of those work, but this will be one of the first that you've seen here. Richard R. Brown Associates is our architect, our contractor is W.L. McNatt. Um, the change on this will increase the contract by 0.4%, and we're recommending approval. Questions? I'd recognize a motion to approve this change order. So moved. Then moves or a second. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Next, we're asked to approve change order number one for Cesar Chavez Elementary School. Increase of $185,440.82. Project ES18. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This project is also in construction, about 35% complete. 
Um, on Southeast Grand Boulevard, if you were to, to go there today, you would find that there all the slabs are poured, the walls, it is a tilt-up precast building. In a matter of the next week or two, we're going to have complete wall structures, much like we saw in Martin Luther King Elementary, where we go from no building to a completed building in a matter of almost days. Um, they've been considerably working on this. One of the very early items that's included in this change order was the discrepancy in the plans that was part of the drilled piers. There were nearly 250 piers on this project utilizing the geotechnical report information that they thought that we're going to be an average depth of 10 feet. Nearly every one of those exceeded that by six feet. And so the cost of this change order is to increase those pier depths by that difference, which added concrete and steel to the project for $185,000. The architect is Frankfurt Short Brugian Associates. Contractor is Wind Construction Company. First change order on the project, and it will also increase um, the project significantly by about nearly 2%. Um, it is necessary and we're recommending approval. Questions? Yes, Anthony. Is the geotechnical engineer a subcontractor of the architect? No, he is not. He actually is engaged directly by our office. So we engage those reports as a part of the planning phases, and we provide the report to the architect for his use. Could this discrepancy not have been foreseen by that engineer? I think that uh, you know we've done we've done a review on this, and I think. Limiting the number of holes that were out there, I don't know that the data was, was best representative of the site. Um, hindsight is probably 2020. There should have probably been additional holes drilled that just were not provided. We felt consistent and thought that the data was good at the time, but, but clearly we were not. Eric and I discussed this last week. You know, there, there's always a you can you spend a lot more money doing investigatory uh, research up front. Generally, it's not needed. This is an area that obviously, as Eric said, 2020 hindsight, we probably would have found it. You, you randomly go down and drill some holes. We, we miss it. Other questions? <laughs> I would recognize a motion to approve this change order. Move for approval. Been moved or second? Second. Move and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Next item is to approve change order number one for Edwards Elementary School, increase of $27,396, Project ES42. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There are uh, six items on this. There's no increase in time. Edward Schools moved considerably along in construction, nearly 50% complete. The two most significant items on this change order are item number two, foundation modifications, and item number three, water line relocation. These were both identified early in the project as we were doing the foundations for the new addition. The work is complete and we're recommending approval. Contractor on this project is Atlas. Architect is Howard. And with this change order, there'll be 1% change to the original contract. Questions? Seeing none, I'd ask for a motion to approve the change order. So moved. It's been moved or second? Second. Moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Next change order is approved. Change order number two for Hoover Elementary School, increase of $16,685.94, project ES31. Thank you. The project at Hoover is nearly 25% complete in construction. There are 17 items on this change order. No additional time. There are some credit items that are included, as in item number four. There's some water heater, or excuse me, in item number three, there is some painting that's not necessary. Item number four, water heater replacement, is one of the more significant items at $6,400. Um, each of these items is just a part of the renovation work that is there at Hoover. Pretty typical of what we expect to see on projects of this type. Uh, with this change order, net changes will be 1% to the project, and we recommend approval. Questions? I'd rec I would recognize a motion to approve this change order. So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Thank you. We're now being asked to approve change order number five for project ES30, Kaiser Elementary School, increase of $57,012. Thank you. This project is about 85% complete, nine items, 10 days of additional time due to some window modifications that were required. Um, of these items, item number six, sidewalk modifications um, for $15,000 is one of the more significant items. And then the largest by far is the last item, number nine, the window revisions. It was found that once the existing windows are being removed, that the details of how they were installed um, were clearly revealed and the new windows would not fit into those spaces. And so significant modifications were necessary to make the fit $22,093. 
HSC Architects is our architect of record. W.O. McNatt is our contractor. With this change, we'll be nearly 6% in changes. We've had some challenges on this project, but nearing 90% complete, we're comfortable moving forward and recommend approval. Are there questions? I recognize the motion to approve change order number five. So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Next is we're being asked to approve change order number two for Pierce Elementary School. Increase of $45,260.28, <coughs> project ES41. Thank you. Pierce is about 60% complete, and there's four items for consideration on this change. Number two is significant at $16,400, some bookcases and heaters. There were some abandoned heaters that required some additional work that was not included in the original plans as part of their demolition. And then item number four is the most significant as we were preparing to install a new parking lot. Uh, soil conditions were very poor and it required us to replace much of the soil beneath that to ensure stabilized um, grade. Stacy Group is our architect. Contractor is Miller Tippins. With this change will be about 3.5% um, over the original contract and we're recommending approval. Questions? I'd recognize a motion to approve this change order. I move to approve. It's been moved. Is there a second? Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Next, we're at being asked to approve change order number two for State Wadi Elementary School. Increase $33,845, Project ES37. Thank you. Stand waiting is 80% complete. 12 items on this change order with no increase in time. Various items just as part of the construction of that facility. On page two, one of the more significant is item number eight, which are some roof drain modifications. These are some of the redesign of the roof drain piping to accommodate the new addition and avoid some ceiling height conflicts that just were not noted in the original plans. Item number 12 is a credit um, for some aluminum windows where we were able to actually take a contractor recommendation for a similar product of, of equal value. Mass Architects is our architect of record. Atlas General Contractors is our contractor, and with this change, we'll be about 2.8% over the original contract. We recommend approval. Questions? Seeing none, I'd ask for a motion to approve this change order. So moved. It's been moved. There a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Finally, we have being asked to approve change order number three for Wilson Elementary School, increase of $249,266. Dollars, project ES15. Thank you. There's a single item on this change order um, with the project being about 85% complete. We were actually considering this item at the original bid. Um, there was a kitchen addition that was proposed um, as an alternate that came in considerably more than we thought it should be worth. Um, we've been working diligently throughout the entire project to try to find ways to accommodate the needs of that cafeteria without actually exercising the addition. But we have found no solution and it's now um, upon us to approve that to ensure that we've got adequate seating space for the students in the new addition that are constructed as a part of that school. This cost is actually slightly higher than the one that we received with the original bids primarily due. The new addition is constructed and it's much harder now to get into the area where the addition needs to go. So they're having to do a lot more hand work than machine work to actually get this done. Contractor has given us um, indications that they can complete this work over the summer so that the entire project is not delayed and that it can open on time in August. It is a considerable item. We do have contingency funds available to pay for this. And with this change, we'll be at 5.8% over the original contract, and we are recommending approval. Questions? I recognize a motion to approve this change order. I move to approve. It's been moved or second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Mr. Couch. Mr. Chairman, just a few items. Uh, all school project interviews are now complete with the exception of the uh, downtown elementary and the administration building. Jefferson, Roosevelt, Webster, Taft, and Rogers Middle Schools were all held last week. Upcoming, upcoming bids include Parks Elementary on May 4th, Davis Demolition on May 4th, Oak Ridge Fire Alarms on May 11th, Capitol Hill High School on May 25th, Southern Hills Elementary on June 8th, Northwest Classen High School on June 15th, and Eugene Field Elementary in late June. Community meetings, uh, Parmalee Elementary, uh, schematic design community meeting uh, is, is tonight at 6 o'clock, and Southern Hills Elementary final plans community meeting is next Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. And our next trust meeting will be 
uh, two weeks from today on April 20th. Any questions? You've received also a project consultant report um, in your packet. Uh, are there any other comments about that, Mr. Myers? Thank you. Uh, are there any comments by trustees, staff, citizens? Thank you. We're adjourned.